Hello everyone, this is the Dice Society and this is my first video on YouTube. Today I'm going to try to teach you how to make a cool hex map, like the one you're seeing right now, for a D&D campaign or any RPG. Uh, this tutorial is pretty simple, you don't need any artistic talent, I'm not an artist, and you don't need to pay anything to get started. I'm doing this in Affinity Designer, which is pretty cheap, but you could actually do it in Inkscape, which is a free and open source program I've used a lot in the past. I'm not going to give you the full tutorial for this map you're seeing right now, but I'm going to give you all of the tips and tricks for you to be able to do it with your world. So let's get started. So this is Affinity Designer and I'm going to choose an A4 page with 300 DPI. And there you go. You can choose anything you want, but make sure to turn on snap to grid because this is going to help a lot. I'm also going to turn on show grid so we can actually see what's happening and then grid and axis so we can change the square grid to a triangular grid. This is essential because it's going to give us a bunch of hexagons for free. And there you go. Now, if I zoom in and select the polygon tool, I can move it up to six sides and turn on the stroke. This is going to give us the hex grid and making sure the stroke is on the inside is gonna fix the alignment for us. Now I can select a point on the grid, hold shift, drag to get a beautiful regular hexagon. Then I align the center to the grid and holding command shift, I'll make it grow in every direction to fit to the actual grid. And now we have a hexagon of the size of the grid. Then I can copy paste it a bunch of times to make the hex grid with a bunch of hexagons. This seems like a lot of work, but it's not. It's just a few copy pastes before you're copying the whole row, as you can see. And now I can just copy it, paste it and drag it down into the left. And there you go. Now we have two rows that we can copy and then four rows we can copy and I have to do it just once more and we're done with the full grid. I even get one extra row I don't need. So I'm going to delete it now. And there you go. Now this is the full grid in just a handful of seconds. Now to the colors. Well, I'm going to select a reference image here, which is the hex map I've shown you at the beginning. It's an old hex map of mine, and it already has the colors I want. I can just resize this image and put it right here. And I can just copy the colors of the image into some reference hexagons, which I'm going to use to copy and paste the colors if I need or just have them there so I can see what my colors are. This is the sand color. This is the grass color. And as you can see, I'm going to do it pretty quickly to get the forest and now the jungle and then the swamp. And this is pretty simple. You can also copy the color codes, which I'm going to leave at the in the description. And this is the snow color for the mountains. And lastly, I'm going to get the water for the oceans. And there you go. Now I can just delete the reference image and simply use the reference hexagons or the palette that Affinity made for me on the far right. Just for example sake, I'm going to make a small square ocean here on the bottom left and then a short strip of sand for the beach and on the top too. And as you can see, this is the map taking shape. This is the grunt of the work. You're going to have to do it a bunch on your own map. 
if you want the shapes to be the shapes of oceans and mountains and forests but it's not that hard actually you can just grab a real world map and kind of copy the shapes and as you can see even if you don't do it like really well there you go it, it's pretty clear that this is an ocean with a peach and then some grasslands and a forest and now for the mountains i'm gonna grab four hexagons here and group them together And this is when we can apply the outer shadow effect. If I turn it on and maximum radius for this, you can see that I have like a shadow around it. And if I put those hexagons at the top layer, there you go. This is a pretty decent mountain. I can even remove the grid now and it's even clearer. You don't need any actual icons to represent a mountain. And now the next step is the pen tool. If I turn on stabilizer and make sure it's the stabilizer I want, I can choose the width of my stroke. And this is gonna help me make roads and rivers. As you can see now with the stabilizer, I can make a curvy curve. <laughs> That's pretty decent. I only need to make it dashed as you can see right now, for it to become an actual road. And there you go. Pretty decent, right? And it's not a lot of work. If I remove the dashes and make it solid, I can also change the color of the stroke to become the same color as the ocean. I can make a pretty quick river too, coming from the top of the mountains and going to the sea. I can even grab the mountain and put it on top and now the river looks like it's coming from inside the mountain. And there you go, this is a most of it. With just a few more adjustments like this vector here, I've grabbed this vector from Font Awesome, the link is also in the description. It's free and you can resize it as much as you want and just put it in the middle of a hex. And now you get the entrance of a dungeon. And that's it, if you like spend an afternoon just adjusting the shapes of the biomes that's all you need to make a cool hex map and i'm gonna just open here pretty quickly the original map and as you can see there's nothing in here that i have not shown you just the icons and the rivers and the roads and the colors of the hexagons that's it you don't need anything else to make a cool hex map and that's it for today. Thank you very much and see you next time.